It's so expressive. It's so alive. Long after the end of his remarkable life, the Western art of Olaf Wighorst still touches the hearts of those who see it. It's so full of feeling. It's, I, I love it. At the museum in El Cajon, California, that bears his name, a rare retrospective of the work of the man known in his day as the Dean of Western Art. 42 original Wighorst oil paintings, plus sculptures, some never before seen in public. This is very rare. The last time a show like this was put on was more than 20 years ago, and it did not have this large of a collection. Wighorst was truly the last of his kind, the last man to paint the Old West who actually lived it. He was the last painter after Russell and Remington to capture the real essence of the cowboy, the West, the Indians. And especially the horse. He grew up horseback, not out West, but as a nine-year-old circus trick rider in his native Denmark. Reading about Buffalo Bill and dreaming of life as a cowboy, Olaf couldn't speak English when he stepped off a boat in New York in 1918 with $1.25 in his pocket. He had the address of an aunt and uncle that lived in New York. He spoke no English and he got on the subway and he spent three days riding underground New York trying to find them. Finally, he met a man who could speak Danish and the fellow got him to his aunt and uncle's house. Olaf joined the U.S. Cavalry and was stationed along the Mexican border during the days of Pancho Villa. Following his army stint, he became a New Mexico cowboy working for the Cunningham Ranch. And their brand was the Quarter Circle 2C. And Olaf was so fond of the Cunninghams that when he left, he asked if he could incorporate that brand as part of his moniker on all of his paintings. But the girl he loved was back in New York, where Olaf returned and put his equestrian skill to work as a legendary officer with the New York Police Mounted Patrol. He was always painting, and he would sell paintings on the sidewalk on Saturdays and Sundays around Central Park. Retiring from police work in 1944, Olaf took his family west and settled in El Cajon. The popularity of his work exploded. In the 1950s, Dwight Eisenhower became the first of four American presidents to hang a wig horse in the Oval Office. Ronald Reagan was a great fan of Olaf. He had Olaf to the White House, and Ronald Reagan said about Olaf Wighorst that lots of other artists had tried to capture the romance of the West, but Ronald Reagan said none of them did it better than Olaf Wighorst. John Wayne was a fan, featuring Olaf's art in his films and casting the man he called the Swede in several of his pictures. And Olaf Wighorst became a treasured friend to those who knew him in El Cajon. So when you look at an Olaf Wighorst painting, uh, you see not just that painting, but you see the man. You see that wonderful generosity and that, that great character. Former Congressman Duncan Hunter was among the crowd at opening night of Reflections of Olaf, a celebration not just of the art, but of the man who created it. He was bigger than life. He was a big, generous, immensely strong guy. He was a great, a great character and had great character. It's art that tells a story. Of what the uh, West was like, what the people were like, and what the uh, life was that they led. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in Today's Wild West or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com.